everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Hannah and I make and design historical costume. Um, I've actually filmed this intro about six or seven times. I started last week and it was just really awkward. This is probably even worse, but we're doing this. We're actually going to do it. I've decided to start YouTube because I thought it would be really cool to document making a pair of men's early 17th century mittens. They're going to be hand embroidered and hand sewn as well. Let's see who finishes first, lockdown or me making these mittens. Who knows? I've started so many projects by hand uh, that I've actually abandoned over the years, one of them being the 18th century embroidered pocket that I'm sure everybody's sick of seeing on my Instagram. Why not put a bit of pressure on myself by documenting it and people expecting me to hopefully continue with it. So yeah, I've already done the research and I've already done the design and the pattern. I did film the design, I did a bit of a time lapse thing that you might have seen on Instagram, um, but I never sort of revealed the design. So that's what I'm gonna do now. With the hand part being crimson velvet, it's obviously not the brightest colour so I thought why not do more gold work than sort of anything else because the gauntlets are going to be ivory silk so why not shove all the colour on that like yeah we've got green on the leaves and also purple blue and green for the bunch of grapes there but actually it's not that much colour compared to the gauntlets. I've picked those colours mainly to go on this because they'll contrast well with the red I'm hoping just so that they stand out a bit more and create a bit more of you know a bit of jazz. The gauntlets are going to look like this hopefully. Now the only thing I've not placed on the designs are the application of spangles and loops of pearl because I'd rather get to the stage where all this is embroidered and then just do it by eye because I feel like I'll be able to see better where the gaps are that need to be filled or where there needs to be a bit more sparkle, a bit more bling, whatever. We've got strawberries, we've got grapes, we've got an eye, we've got butterflies, flowers and some happy snails. These are all motifs that I have seen either in portraits, on extant garments or documented however. It might not be just on mittens because I've also used research into gloves and also you know like jackets, doublets, all the, everything basically, early 17th century bits of everything, my favourite motifs really, or a few of. From what I've seen, the motifs sort of come up here, there and everywhere, you know, they're, they're constantly being repeated on different garments, so I felt that the freedom was a bit, you know, I could go a bit more mad. Well, I could have gone even crazy to be honest, but this is what I've ended up with. The lines, it might look a bit weird and a bit messy, because it is a bit weird and messy, but the lines are to signify the direction of stitch um, so that I can see, you know, oh that leaf's going in that direction I don't want everything going in the same direction, let's have it going in that direction you know, cause a bit of contrast, a bit of texture for fabrics, the base, I was going to interline with calico because obviously everybody's got so much of it and then I was looking through my stash the other day and I came across all of this black linen and a lot of interlinings were linen so I thought you know what I'm going to do it let's use the black linen that's been in my drawer for over a year so this is what we're going to use for the gauntlets I'll be using ivory silk this is you know a lot of the gauntlets I've seen or looked at online they've had ivory silk on the top basically and I think it you know with the colours that are going to go on the embroidery and everything I reckon it's better to have a sort of uh, more neutral base then the crimson velvet here we are this is cotton velvet it's not silk velvet purely because I don't have the budget to do the whole thing in silk 
and the minimum order of this was a metre. And also, oh, I'm going to say it, sometimes you can't tell the difference between cotton and silk velvet. I've said it, there we go. And I'll also quite wrongly be using this to line the mittens with. Usually it's a lovely pink colour that line garments, gloves, gauntlets. Um, however, because I've got so much of this and I want to stick to natural fibres, this is why I'll be using that. You know, I've got so much of it. The only sort of nice pink, you know, the relevant pink that I could find was synthetic and um, that was in my budget. So now I'm going to contradict myself and say I've got synthetic braid and woven metallic lace. Because I know lockdown's going on for a long time, but I really don't think I could have learned how to weave um, metallic threads into a braid. And these were quite cheap and I think they're quite cheery actually I think they'll be a good substitute you know compromise it's it's part of it I've got the same braid but in two different sizes again like with the spangles and everything once I get to the stage of deciding the trim placement and the you know the, the braid placement I'll decide on what size and I think as well it would be quite nice to use both sizes you know like in the thumb section where you've got a lot of you know you've got movement there you don't want a great big you know chunk of braid going in your way of your thumb you know so it might be nicer to use the thinner stuff who knows we'll decide later what I'm going to do now is I am going to cut out um, the top fabric and start basting it to the linen so then I can set up my embroidery frame oh, and of course transferring the embroidery pattern onto the fabrics. Exciting and scary! Now I've got all my pieces cut out, uh, I'm going to start actually by transferring the embroidery pattern onto the fabric pieces and then once I've finished that then I'll be basting um, the pieces onto the black linen to then get started on the embroidery. I have my embroidery pattern here uh, printed out and I've got my top fabric so I'm just going to lay the fabric on top because actually I can sort of see through the silk. So I've got my pins, sorry I am left handed and I'm quite aware that I've put the camera in the wrong place, however I am sort of ambidextrous so hopefully it'll just end up that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pinning the, the fabric onto the pattern piece with the pattern piece inside my chalk line so I can trace the pattern through because luckily this silk is quite, you know, I can see through it, it's not transparent but I can see the lines are just dark enough, you know, they're, they're just there. I'm just going to use a pencil actually um, to mark out the pattern. In some examples of extant garments you can still see the pattern the, the pencil marks on the garments you know if the embroidery hasn't been carried out quite to the line or even completed you know you, you can still see evidence of pencil or you know chalk or however they've used whatever they've used even to mark out the pattern there so if I was going to be really clever I'd have ironed this first however um, I'm currently decorating the room uh, with my ironing board in and I just don't want a chance taking this into a place with wet paint. I know I could move my ironing board but my house isn't that big so this is why I'm doing it this way. But I've just got a B pencil just to um, outline everything because then you can sort of get a definite mark but it's not a, it's 
so hard that there's going to be an issue. So I'm just doing the outlines very, very, very gently and actually um, I'm, I've started in a random place which is okay actually, it's okay. I'm not going to do the inner lines, literally just concentrating on the outlines. And I am actually going to just do a quick check underneath, check, check, check. So I can then make sure I am getting the right lines. And it's okay because I've got everything pinned. So it's not exactly moving from the fabric. I don't know if you can see that, but I am just doing suggestions. I'm also being quite conscious of the fact that it's one of the hottest days of the year and I'm getting quite sweaty and I don't want to get anything on the silk you know, it's a bit of a devil for grease stains and stuff now I have all my embroidery patterns onto my fabric so here is the silk as you saw earlier it was quite easy to trace really um, just because the silk is quite fine um, so I think actually basting it to the linen before embroidering will actually help the structure of the silk and help it you know, be a bit more of a solid thing. Now with the velvet uh, I actually used the prick and pounce method so the I just went over the design with a pin and just stamped and pricked the design out. Just the overall outline, not the inner direction of stitch. Uh, similar with the tracing of the, the silk pattern. But then I, as you can see, smudged a load of chalk onto, you know, through the holes onto the fabric, which then left a faintish line so then I could go over it with pencil. I have gone over it with pencil just because I am going to be moving these bits of fabric around quite a lot. You know, I've got to baste into the linen and then set up my embroidery frame. Your hands are going to be on it quite a lot. So that's why I wanted it in pencil so that the chalk line didn't disappear into the pile of the velvet or just disappear altogether. I'm not going to film basting onto the linen purely because I'm aware of how long this video is and potentially the next one because we'll be focusing on the embroidery um, and I think I've, this is where I've got to decide what's interesting and what's not so I've sort of decided that basting isn't that interesting. You'll see the end result in the next video when I start embroidering so you know it'll be fine in the end. I'm going to end this video here, thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far. I understand that this might be a bit boring because it's the sort of admin -y side as in the preparation, the discussion of the project etc um, but obviously it is an important part everybody's got to do it. I just wanted to document each step from beginning to end just, just because, just to see the whole journey. Thank you so much for watching if you're still here. If you enjoyed it that much please hit the like button and if you want to keep up to date with this journey then hit the subscribe button. I'll also leave a link to my Instagram in the drop down section just because I will be posting little sneaky peeks on there so if you want to keep up to date with the progress before you know I release another video then please hit follow.